Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells, and this video is about frequently asked question, how long should I research an item, or how much research should I do? And I think this has kind of gotten out of hand over the past few years, um, especially on my Facebook group. I see people who are just spending so much time trying to figure out the name of a pattern, or um, you know, the name of a color, of a shade, of, you know, going to, into all this detail. And it, I think that you're wasting a lot of time on unnecessary details. Um, you got to remember that time is money. And if you're spending 30 minutes trying to find the name of a pattern for a sweater or a tablecloth, um, you know, you could be listing more items during that time. So if, in my opinion, if, if you can't find the research that you need, the answers that you need within about five minutes, um, you're spending too much time. Now, obviously, if it's a very expensive item, if it's an antique or a signed artwork, something like that definitely warrants more research than something that you found at a thrift store for $3 that you're going to sell for around 30 It's just not that important. It's much more important to have more listings and to get more done in a day. Um, so I'm going to show you some strategies for finding quick answers when you're researching. Um, but really, you know, is it blue? Is it aquamarine? Is it turquoise? Is it teal? Um, you know, you don't need to go to that level of detail. Um, if someone is searching for a green sweater, that's what they're going to put in. Um, it's, uh, you're overthinking it in some cases. So keep it short, sweet, to the point, and... Don't spend too much time researching because that is time that you could be spending getting more items, uh, shopping, listing more items, and you know moving ahead in your business. So here is uh, today's tip on research. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few examples of how to do research and some tools um, that you can use online that are free. And this is just a matter of creating a system and remembering to use these, I call them tools, um, to help you with research as you go along. So this is a, an item in my store. Um, this is a Margaret Smith handbag. Um, I'm actually selling this on consignment for a friend. And she told me the whole history of it, so I know that it is brand new. It was never used, and where her, her mother actually got it, um, I think in the 60s. So I know the history of it, and I know it's it's pretty, um, you know, valuable. So first thing I did um, and the first thing you should do whenever you have something is go on eBay and look at completed listings. Um, you know, make sure you've chosen the correct condition and you're looking at sold listings first. Um, and then I always sort these when I'm doing research by highest to lowest price. So this is an item that... Um, there weren't very many of on eBay, so there's only eight. And that's not going to give me a very good indication of, of what I can get for it. Um, because for all I know, these people priced these too low. They did not do their research. They could have gotten a lot more, but, um, you know, they just maybe threw a price on it to get rid of it. They didn't know any better. So that's why you don't want to rely solely on eBay completed listings when you have... Um, an unusual or rare item. Now what you can also do is um, you can look at the active listings for these items and here we've got 33 listings for Margaret Smith handbag. So you can see the active ones are priced higher than the sold ones. Doesn't mean they won't sell for that price. Remember that sold listings only go back um, 30 days. So you're not getting a big enough picture to make a decision on pricing if you just look at the sold listing and nothing else. Again, this is for unusual items. Um, you know, obviously, if this was a pair of uh, Ralph Lauren uh, pants and there were thousands of them, you could get what you needed from completed. But when you have something that is a little bit harder to put a price on, you also want to look at the active listings. While you're on the actives, um, you know, pick one of the higher priced listings 
and go look at the seller. So this particular seller has um, almost over 6,500 feedback, so they've been there a while. Um, you can go to their store and look at the kind of things they sell and how many things they have listed. And that will give you an indication of their knowledge. And, you know, so you want to look to people on eBay, other sellers who are smarter than you, who have more stuff than you, who've sold more things than you, because they're going to know more. So that's going to factor into your decision about how to price. Um, look at the sellers whose items you are looking at to see if they know what they're doing. Um, so like this one here, this seller only has 56 feedbacks. Um, you know, do we know that they have priced this correctly? We don't know that. Um, you really don't know that anybody has priced their items correctly, but you want to get as much um, data as you can to make your decision. Okay, so the next thing you would do, um, the next thing I did when pricing this was I googled vintage Margaret Smith handbag and a whole bunch of them come up on Etsy. Now Etsy is more about vintage items. People there are more knowledgeable and that's another way you can compare um, you know pricing. So if we just go to Etsy, pull up some of these Margaret Smith purse or handbags, um, we can see these are priced much higher than the solds on eBay. So this is also data that you can use in making your decision. Um, unfortunately, there's just no scientific way to put all of these factors into a machine and come out with the price you're going to charge. It's all about what will the market bear? What will someone pay? That's what we don't know. So it's always better to price high. So um, you can also go to um, Google and look for um, blog posts about items. So let's see if this is going to help us here. Um, here's a blog about, you know, Margaret Smith handbags. You can spend some time reading that. Um, this person um, looks like they talk about all kind of vintage stuff, and they're probably more knowledgeable than the average eBay seller. So you need to seek out people who have knowledge about these products, um, things that you're selling and you don't know how to price. Seek out other people who know about them. Okay, another thing that you can do is um, there's a lot of questions on my Facebook group about, you know, what style is this? What, um, what is this called as far as clothing is concerned? And if you go, um, I'll give you an example on dresses, for example. So if I go to my eBay store here and I go to dresses, um, I try to put the style name in the title. If it's something that's not usual, you know, it's, it's out of the ordinary. So for example, um, this is a coat dress. This is very identifiable by the terms coat dress. This is a certain look. Uh, when I worked in banking in the 90s, this is what we wore, a suit or this. And uh, this is the type of thing that people in professional offices may wear, attorneys, um, that type of thing. So they're going to be looking for this word, uh, coat dress. Um, another one is uh, pinup style is very popular right now. So this is the classic um, sort of halter style um, sleeveless that is it's called pinup, especially if it's polka dots, it's called pinup um, with the halter. So you know that's another another one that is important there. Um, I've also got one down here. I think it's uh, here's a wrap dress. Um, this is a certain style. You can see it it just wraps around the belt is attached. So some people like this style because it's all about um, it's figure flattering for certain figures and it hides um, as my friend Nancy says a multitude of sins. <laughs> so. Some people want the wrap dress and the 
Diane von Furstenberg, uh, DVF dresses are this. So that's a really important keyword. You want to use the keywords that your buyers are going to search for. Um, this is another unique style of dress. Um, it almost looks like a mummy, <laughs> but it's a vintage, I think it's vintage, um, Tadashi dress. And I hope I said that right. Um, but it's actually called a bandage dress. And if people are into um, this type of look, they're going to search for those words. So um, I could go on and on with more examples, but, um, oh, here's one. I found this, um, actually I bought this from a friend of mine who didn't want it, and I had no idea what to call this. So I used Google Images to figure out it's called a cage back dress because the back actually looks like a bird cage. So that being said, how do you figure out what these things are called? Well, you go to my second favorite place called Pinterest, and you can look up style charts. And um, like up here I put in dress style chart. They're also called a uh, style guide or uh, vocabulary charts. So for example, um, here's one for, well that's for a baby, we don't want to do that one. Um, here's a very basic one that is, um, you know, basic drawings of the styles of dresses, and it will tell you what you need to know. Um, do you need to look this up for every single clothing item you uh, list? Of course not. But if there's something unique about the dress, if it's a particular style, um, you do need to know what you're selling so you can use the right keywords. So go to Pinterest and look up these style guides. They have them for everything, dresses, um, necklines. This is a really interesting one, the necklines. Um, shoes, skirts, men's clothing, bridal stuff, everything. Um, and the, the reason you want to do this is this is all about empowering you. It's great to ask questions on Facebook groups, but Everything you need is right here in your computer. You just need to use it. Um, it's better for you to know how to find the answer yourself than to post a question on a group, wait for people to answer, who then end up disagreeing with each other over what something is. And, you know, that's time wasted. So the more you can empower yourself and equip yourself with how to find the answers, um, the more successful you're going to be. Remember, being an entrepreneur is about doing things yourself. And you've got to learn to wear many hats to make this successful. Um, and, and so what if you make the wrong decision? Big deal. It's just a, a vocabulary word. It's not life or death. But the more you can empower yourself to find the answers you need, the more successful you're going to be. So, um, that's, you know, Pinterest is a great place to go look for style guides or style charts to find out what it is you're selling. And use those keywords so that buyers can find those items. Okay, another thing you can do is use um, the Google image search. When you have something you don't know what it is or you can't find anything comparable, you're just going to go to images.google.com and you're going to drop an image in here. And um, what you need to do is take a picture of your item and then save it to your computer. And then you're going to upload your image. So for example, I downloaded something earlier that I had trouble finding at first. Um, I kind of sort of knew what it was, but wasn't sure what it was called. And so here's my image. Um, it's a vintage camel cigarette box and so I took a picture of it and put it in there and then I found out what it was called and it turns out this item I got for three dollars it looked cool and it had the old camel uh, logo on the front it sells for about fifty dollars so you know using Google image search is a great way to figure out what you have um, another issue that comes up is 
you know, what color is this? What color do you guys think this is? And really, you don't need to get so specific um, and waste time trying to figure this out. You know, a color is pretty easy to find. And here's a couple of resources. Um, this is the actual Pantone color table. Um, Pantone colors are like the color palette that web designers use. Um, so there's tons of these online. This is uh, this site I will put in the description below the video so you can go to it. But, you know, it just gives you an idea of what to call things. Don't take this literally, though. I mean, here's a green right here that's called inchworm. Well, you know, obviously you're not going to put that on your listing on eBay because that's not going to make any sense. But, you know, it, it's got different greens on here. Sea green, forest green, um, colors that people would recognize. Um, aquamarine, turquoise, you know, those are, are colors that are used in the fashion world. Um, so you can look at that list here. And, you know, if you have a, a red sweater, just say it's a red sweater. You don't have to spend, you know, a lot of time trying to figure out what shade of red it is. You know, it, it's, that's not something that's really important to worry about. Um, you can also go over to the list of Crayola crayon names. That's a cool thing to use. Um, but again, you know, you're not going to say something is English vermilion because who's going to even know what that means? But this will show you some different shades of red, orange red, scarlet, maroon. Um, what I would do is, you know, put the basic color like red and then dash brick red, you know, if you want to get more specific on it. Um, but what you're trying to do here is match up keywords with what people are searching for. And that is the big task of eBay sellers is um, titling your items correctly and describing them correctly. And, you know, a lot of times people will get something and they'll say, this isn't the right color. It just didn't match what they wanted to use it for. Um, it's not a big deal. You know, you're doing your best to describe it. You're giving it your best effort. So uh, the Pantone color table and then this list of Crayola uh, color names will be, you know, helpful. It's a quick go-to, and then you don't end up on a Facebook post with, you know, five people arguing, is it, is it um, aquamarine or is it turquoise or is it this? That does not matter. That is a huge waste of time. Say blue or green, you know, pick something here that makes sense, get it on your listing, and, and move on to the next thing. That is... Time is of the essence when you are listing on eBay. So don't get bogged down in these details that really don't matter. You know, you're not painting something for a museum. You're putting something online that's hopefully going to be gone in a couple weeks. So just remember the time investment and, you know, keep a perspective on that. Okay, some of you have asked if I can look at your store and help you out. Yes, I do have a service for that. Um, I'll put the link to this in the description below the video, but um, this service is $83. And what you get is I will go over your store and send you a written report on anything that could be better for uh, search engine optimization or from a customer service standpoint, or if you are breaking any eBay policies, um, like some of these folks that are copying pictures off the internet, that is a huge no-no, and you can get suspended for doing that. So you might be doing things you don't even know are wrong because you're new. So um, you get all of that in a written report, which usually is five to 10 pages long, and you also get 30 days of email support. So I will be uh, your help desk, unlimited email support for a whole month so that I can help you get your store going and um, get everything on track and help hopefully ramp up your traffic and your sales. So uh, please leave your comments below if you think this information was helpful. Um, just remember, use the internet, use Google, use Pinterest. Um, take the initiative to do some research on your own because if you're going to rely on other people to do it for you on these Facebook groups, you're going to be waiting for answers. And um, you need to learn to make these decisions if you're going to be successful on eBay. So thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.